So recording is on. I see the red dot. Everybody acknowledges that they know that they're being recorded and, is, and everyone is fine with that. Um, so the next item I have is, is some introductions. Uh, first, I'd like to let people know that we have our, our new faculty, some of whom are here today. So I'll, I'll announce all of them and those who are here, uh, raise your hand or make a gesture. Uh, these are our distinguished lecturers, first of all. Uh, Carmen Buyosa is here, I believe. Hi, Carmen, welcome. Uh, Logan McBride is here. And uh, Zora Syed is here. Zora and Norel Edwards, our fourth uh, distinguished lecturer, is uh, currently in a uh, postdoc in Texas. And so she won't actually be joining us till the spring. But so we'll look forward to welcoming uh, Norel in the spring when she comes. Welcome to the, the four of you. And we also have three new postdocs uh, full-time working with our teaching learning collaboratory. Um, and I don't see if they are here, but they are Jean, probably Joe One is here, Joe Pentangelo is here, uh, and Jean Park is here. Uh, and Andre Flood uh, is not here today, but he is the third one. So welcome to the three postdocs uh, and welcome to the distinguished lecturers. And the, the big news is, we have a, a new interim dean who is the chair of this body uh, by virtue of her uh, office and position. And I really, really want to give a, a warm welcome and featured spotlight to Dean Vanessa K. Valdez. And here she is. Thank you all. Uh, this is ex incredibly exciting for me because while I have met with our new faculty and with uh, our, our three faculty members, um, two of our three faculty members, I've not met with all of you. And this is my first shot. Um, I've met with our directors that are on this call or, in, or in our advisors, but not all of you. So um, I'm really, really happy to be here. And I look forward to listening and learning from all of you as we continue to center uh, Macaulay's academics and, and what all of you do. So thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Vanessa. And, and the uh... Devotes, I should say, and the, the next uh, item on the agenda is the Dean's updates. So I'm going to hand it back to you. So thank you. There we go. Unmute myself. This is fun. Um, <laughs> so Dean's updates at this point, um, as I stated, I, I started, I started officially on August 2nd, but really I signed the offer letter to this position on July 8th and began meetings with everyone July 12th. And so um, my primary update is that I have met again with the vast majority of staff. Um, this is a tremendous place, Macaulay Honors College. Um, I am deeply, deeply humbled by the dedication of our staff to our students in addition to, of course, our faculty, but again, I haven't met with many of you and I look forward to doing so. Um, one of the things that I have been uh, also doing is really coming to understand what is the Macaulay Honors College experience. And so I will say that it has been heartening to me to, and to highlight, to come to not only learn about different aspects of both academic affairs and student development, but also moving forward to really highlight those things, right? And so, for example, you know, Joe knows this about, you know, the Justice and Equity Honors Network, the Bridge Transfers Program, um, our Wellness Program, uh, our Career Development Program, um, the Student Support Team, which I met with this morning and which I was really, really happy to hear that they support not only our students, but also our advisors, that there's availability there for that, for supporting our advisors. And so it's, it's deeply important to me uh, that we, that I, on, on our internal Slack, uh, I, my bio is cheerleader for Macaulay Honors College. And that's really how I think about myself is really coming to, not only see what, what is being done in this school, but then within the building, really appre expressing appreciation for what is done. And then outside the building, really going, oh my God, do y'all know what is happening at Macaulay Honors College? And, and with that is really heightening the profile of this college 
such that everyone knows because there, you know, there are people who know it with uh, know about it within CUNY um, or know about, you know, but it's not as we're not where I would like for us to be. Um, what I would like for us to be, and this means not changing anything that any of you do, but what I would like for us to be is that coast to coast that that people know of the Macaulay Honors College at CUNY, and so that is a multi-tiered. Um, campaign, right? That's a question of communications. That's a question of um, primarily communications, actually, but communications on like a one to one level with me. Um, but also, you know, you will be seeing changes in terms of um, our website. You, we will soon be rolling out a, uh, an identification of our first gen staff and faculty. So if you, because I was very happy to learn of, you know, I'm, I'm a first generation college graduate, graduate school graduate, first gen professor, <laughs> first gen dean. Um, and so many of our staff are as well. And so, and so many of our students are. And so you will be seeing that William Macaulay was a first gen college graduate. And so that identification, right? Really leaning into, we are the Macaulay Honors College at CUNY, right? Uh, have uh, in these past months, I've also met with the our 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 partner college presidents. All of them, they're all very positive um, with me um, in terms of, and and this relationship, you know. And so there's just um, really coming to understand, you know, our identity at Macaulay. My understanding. Um, or at least under this one year, <laughs> while I am officially the interim dean, that, um, and I'll talk about this a bit in a second about the, the permanent search, or Lisa may want to talk about that for a second, but, um, and that's on the agenda for under new business, is, you know, whereas in the past students have felt like they have had to choose, Right there's we have students who have said they're Macaulay and have not expressed themselves with the eight campuses. There's some students who don't let people know that they're Macaulay. They're very much you know Lehman or Baruch or John Jay. So what I have told students is that they have CUNY CUNY double CUNY superpowers, right? That they are Macaulay and they are both ands rather than either or, right? And so that is how uh, I am acting, um, really digging into how we are a part of CUNY. And how this space is the, the, the place of an a place of innovation within the CUNY system. We are the consortial undergraduate body, right? And so there's a lot. You all are tremendous in what you have done. And I look forward to, and I will be soon, very, very soon, setting out um, what we will be doing, but a lot of it is not changing. <laughs> it's more, you all are tremendous. Let's dig in and let's develop and let's grow that which is already here. So that's it. Thanks very much, Vanessa. And of course, you know, when we get to the uh, discussion in new business, I'm sure people will have uh, specific questions and things to, to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. But let's move on through the agenda. Um, next is our update on the courses being offered centrally here at Macaulay in the spring uh, and, and a report from the curriculum committee about those and, and future courses. And that is Professor Reese, who is here. Lizzie, are you here? Yes, I'm yes. here. I'm, I'm off the train and uh, I am finally <laughs> at a place. Um, so hi, everybody. Uh, let's see. We, well, our curriculum committee meetings are very exciting now because we have faculty uh, to teach all the classes. So we have some we have an excellent lineup in the spring. Um, let's see. We have uh, Professor McBride is going to teach a seminar, too, at Baruch. Uh, Zora Said is going to teach, the, as she's doing this semester, the um, JEHN class, well, along with the other professor from Arizona. Um, Ted Widmer is going to teach Seminar 2, the peopling of New York City. I'm teaching an issues and medical ethics class, even though we can't go into the hospital like we normally can because of COVID. I have lined up a lot of guest speakers from all my physician friends who feel bad that my class can't come into the hospital, so they're going to... Um, you know, virtually zoom in, which is nice. Uh, Kelly O'Donnell is teaching detecting bullshit in the modern age. Eric Joya is teaching a seminar for uh, shaping the future of New York City. Uh, I already said Ted was doing that. Um, 
the, the, there's four of us teaching Springboard, me and Logan McBride and Lisa Brundage and Zora Saeed. We're all, we have two sections of that going. It's a year long class. So that's coming along nicely. Students are diving into their topics. Emily Rice is teaching the physical and personal universe, exploring outer space through science, cultural analysis and introspection. Um, a, a new person to Macaulay, Alan Hillary, who is a Columbia professor and a civil engineer is teaching a really interesting class called Exploring W.E.B. Du Bois's Sociological Approach, which is gonna look at the data visualizations of Du Bois. And uh, Hillary is interested in the importance of creating data narratives and improving representation for all diverse groups and kind of through using their storytelling and how that can have a major impact on society. And it's gonna be, that's his, that's his major interest and he's gonna be using what Du Bois did to um, unpack that for the students. Uh, and we're excited to have him and he's very excited about teaching here. So I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Uh, Robert Small is gonna teach a class called, Can You Believe This? A Look at Impact Media. We're hoping that that title, you know, is very exciting. <laughs> um, Narelle Edwards, our, um, the faculty member who's starting in the spring, is teaching a class called The New Renaissance in Black Science Fiction, Afrofuturism, and the Afro-Gothic Literature. And then finally, last but not least, Carmen Boyosa is going to teach a class called Hamlet and Don Quixote. So our classes just sound to me to all of us on the curriculum committee. So interesting and appealing to students. And some of them will be in person, some of them will be hybrid. Um, what else did I want to say about that? And just in general, the curriculum committee, now that we have you know, more people to be on it, more faculty, we're going to make it more um, formalized a little bit. I mean, we'll still have our, we'll still be informal in our communications with each other, but we're going to make it more like this is due on this day, this is due on this day, this is due on this day, so that we have a, pro a, a set process that everybody is aware of, and it'll just make it, it'll make organizing the classes and knowing what we're doing a semester in advance a little bit easier. Um, that's about it. Is there anything else, Joe, that you think needs to be covered? Uh, did you want to mention any of the uh, classes that we put off till fall? Ah, let me um, go to that. Well, we haven't really discussed these classes yet. Okay, so we'll maybe uh, hold off on those. Yeah, I think we can wait off on I Just teaser, can... there's going to be well, some really teaser, great classes. Uh, uh, Logan okay. is going to teach a class on making and unmaking mass incarceration. And Zora is going to teach a class about Asia, uh, a survey of Central Asian film and literature. Exciting titles to be <laughs> TBD. <laughs> TBD. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Lizzie. Um, and again, you know, questions or discussion of that we can we can have uh, uh, in the new business section. Actually, um, I might as well remind everybody that an upcoming deadline is November fifteenth. People are supposed to have their. Um, syllabi in for next if you're teaching a new class you need to have your syllabi in by november 15th is that correct lisa yes and lisa has just passed out the uh new course proposal form um for everybody to have for their convenience and for the courses that we don't have syllabi posted yet those are in the works and, and should be very soon um you know we're, we're Nor norell for example is in texas so uh, kind of busy with a full-time job there, but we're trying to get her to nail down a syllabus, at least one that can be used to determine equivalencies, which I know is a, a big concern as the permits get pro uh, processed. Um, and for who's teaching which course, I think uh, uh, Lizzie went through the list. You can look on the on the website too. Yeah. Um, moving on. Uh, oh, it's me next. So. I'm going to give a quick update on our Justice and Equity Honors Network, which is really uh, in its pilot or inaugural year right now with our, uh, we, we talked about it at our last meeting. This is a, a, a cooperation at this point between us at Macaulay and the Barrett Honors College at Arizona State. Uh, that's, that's how we're beginning. And we've got a, a really uh, 
uh, exciting and engaged group of students from, from both campuses, uh, about 19, 18 or 19 students all together. And they are meeting weekly in these online synthesis sessions, uh, OSS, with uh, Zora, who's our Macaulay co-instructor, and with Rachel Fedock from uh, Arizona State, who is actually also a CUNY Graduate Center alumna. So there's kind of an extra CUNY uh, connection there. Um, the idea of the, of the program is to bring together honor students who are interested in issues of justice and equity from very different regions of the country and let them find ways or help them to find ways to apply what they're learning in their classes at their home campuses to real issues around justice and equity in their own, own communities, in their own regions and, and in the nation as a whole. Um, and the conversations going on, you know, across these Phoenix and New York City uh, and across a wide range of different majors and different types of students have been really exciting, as, as Zora has reported. I, I'm not going to put you on the spot, Zora, and ask you to relay any of that, but uh, it's, it's really kind of taken off. All the students were given the book Cast by uh, Isabel Wilkerson uh, to read over the summer, and that's been sort of a... a uh, I guess a foundation text, but thanks to Zora and Rachel, they've been bringing in all kinds of other texts and artwork and film and a, a lot of uh, kind of different approaches this semester. As this semester goes on, that's going to continue and they're developing their connections one to another um, and, and within the group. And then as they move to next semester, they're starting to work on projects, uh, research projects specifically connected to issues of justice and equity. Uh, that they will then be able to present uh, to each other and to outside audience at a uh, summer gathering. You know, we hope, we pray that it will be possible for them all to come together in person this summer. Um, we're right now finalizing the details of that. We are uncertain whether it's going to be actually in Phoenix or and New York with, with them moving from one place to another, or if we're going to choose a third place. Um, Washington DC and centering the, uh, the meeting around the uh, Smithsonian Folklife Festival is looking like a very appealing idea. And uh, Barrett Honors College has a building, the, the Barrett O'Connor uh, Center uh, in Washington DC, uh, named for Justice uh, Senator Day O'Connor and, and the Barrett, Mrs. Barrett who founded their, or who endowed their Honors College. And that facility gives us a nice option of a real kind of uh, third place where the students can gather and have uh, meetings and presentations and, uh, you know, use it as a base to travel around the city. Uh, and we want them to do cultural events, social activities, and some service uh, in, in the city of DC. So we're going to finalize those plans very soon. The next step then is to recruit a new cohort. Of, uh, of JEHN students to start in the fall of 2022. Um, and we are right now on the, on the cusp of trying to decide whether it's too soon to welcome another Honors College or two into the network. Uh, we've got very strong interest from some Honors Colleges who are also hot to do this kind of work. Uh, Central Arkansas University has a, a Honors College that's more than twice as old as, as uh, Barrett, uh, well, um, as us, we're, we're just in our 20th anniversary, they're approaching their 40th anniversary. Um, and they're really interested in giving their students this kind of connection to very different uh, students. So it looks like what we're gonna do is this spring hold an info session, uh, a convening virtually uh, for other honors colleges all across the country uh, who might be interested in joining. We're not gonna uh, decide that we can welcome all the honors colleges in the country at once uh, because we want to keep our quality high as we move ahead with this program. Uh, but it's, it's a very exciting new program. It's a new initiative for us that I think is uh, really going to start to take off as more students apply uh, for next year and the year after. And uh, this uh, opportunity for I mean, it, 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 I think it's a large number of our students, as we're finding, who are really uh, dedicated and committed to kind of solving the, the, the problems and the, and the uh, uh, fractures that really are, are facing 
the country and, and their country today. Um, and we thought that one of the best ways to look at uh, those problems was to help these very talent, academically talented and well-prepared students have an outlet to talk to one another and come up with new projects and new ideas. Um, so that's underway and you know we, we will be continuing to report on it. You can look for news about it as, as, we, as we go forward. I think these students are gonna really go places. Um, I just pause there, Zora, in case, I'm not putting you on the spot, but in case you wanna say anything about the students in the OSS sessions. Um, the students are fantastic. They are uh, all ready for um, having these uh, discussions. They read all the material, even though it's supplementary to cast. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the car, so okay. you may not be hearing too much, but they are ready and they're ready to be vulnerable, share, and also um, they're very empowered by the work. So you can see them in articulating themselves and, um, and thinking about identity and thinking about you know, how you make identity and then uh, thinking about race and justice. It's been a really fantastic um, class, I would say. Great, thanks very much. Um, and next I'm gonna turn it over to Lisa to talk about uh, some elections that we have to have, that we get to have, I should say. Lisa, you're still muted, it seems. Huh? Uh, maybe your battery died. I can't right. hear you. Hang yeah, on. there you go. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so we have two things that we are running elections for right now. Um, one, they're both timely, but one is a little bit more compressed than the other. So um, the first thing is um, representatives to serve on the search committee that Dean Valdez mentioned earlier in her talk. Um, so if you are interested in being a faculty member on the executive search committee, um, we are taking self nominations for that. We are asking that those come in by the end of next week. So hold on, I'm gonna put a link into the, um, into the chat. Uh, there's a very brief form that you can fill out. And then once we have all of the people who are planning to self-nominate, we will be um, kind of compiling those and then sending them out for you to vote um, when it uh, in the following week. And yes, oh, and I'm gonna say a little bit more about the, the membership of the search committee, don't worry. Um, so what you might want to know, um, thinking about who can serve on the committee, and this also is who can serve on the um, college council at Macaulay, is it is um, our full-time distinguished lecturers who are based at Central and also um, full-time tenured or tenure track faculty on our consortial campuses um, who have been active in the academic year that we're currently in or in the previous academic year. Um, we compiled a list of everybody that we believe is eligible. So we'll be reaching out um, as a follow-up with these links and saying like, Hey, you know, and also for obviously there's four more people on that list than who are present today. So we'll be sending out probably tomorrow a little reminder that says like, you know, you're probably eligible to run for one of these positions. Um, if you're interested, please self nominate. And then we'll be reaching out to that group to vote as well. So that's the same group of people who are eligible to vote. Um, so the search committee for the Dean um, is made up of a variety of people. I'm the administrative coordinator. I'm not a member of the search committee, but I'm interfacing with the central office around it. Um, they'll be working with um, an executive search firm to do a lot of the pieces. Um, but there are people from Macaulay's board. There is a consortial college president. Um, there are um, there's a student representative from Macaulay. There's three faculty members who will be elected by you to participate in that, um, as well as some external stakeholders that the central office will choose. Um, and it might include also senior administrative people from Macaulay and also from the, um, the central office. Uh, the process, if you're thinking about like, what will this entail, um, will probably be a meeting or two towards the end of this semester. Um, and then the majority of the work will be taking place in the spring. Um, once the um, search commit, the search firm that central office is gonna work with has been selected, um, they go through a series of meetings with stakeholders throughout the college. So that'll include, you know, like there will be another meeting where even if you're not a member of the committee, if you'd like to talk to the search firm about what you know, qualities you're looking for in a dean, you'll be invited to one of those. Um, there will also be um, ones, you know, with students, with staff, 
um, and uh, probably with the board. So they'll get to know a little bit more about what we need. Um, then the people who are actually in the search committee proper kind of go behind closed doors and they figure out um, you know, who they want to advance from the applicants um, as uh, they, um, you know, like they, they go through that process and then those names are advanced to um, the chancellor. So um, I see, Owen, you're also asking, um, do I know which consortial president? I don't. I don't know specific names. Those choices are at the, um, like at the behest of the central office. So one of the jobs that I do is I'm in the process of making lists of potential people who could participate and then sending them over there. But we don't choose. Um, they do the choosing. So it'll probably be the chancellor who appoints somebody from um, one of the consortial campuses. And here's a document. Um, thank you, Vanessa, for reminding me of this one. I was actually, I had it open to send and I didn't push it in the chat. Um, this is information just for any kind of like presidential level search that happens at CUNY. Um, this is what the search committee looks like. Um, so there's guidelines that are set by, um, by the university for that. So I would, I'm giving you the generic descriptions because that's what I have available to me. Um, yeah, Lizzie. Um, I just wanted to tell people some information because I was on it and, and so was Linda. Uh, uh, Linda Kletch was on it too the last time and maybe she would have something to add, but it was the fanciest search I had ever been on when I was on it. Like when it's run by a search team, it's just completely different when it's run by a search, you know, a firm like that. It's very different from a regular faculty search. Like you come into a room and they have assigned seats and they had really nice binders with all the information in it. And I mean, and really fancy lunches. <laughs> it was, it was very different from any search I'd ever been on. So that was kind of fun. Um, the, and as, as you said, the majority of the, the work happens in the spring and because they uh, winnow down, the search firm winnows down a list. So maybe it's, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but maybe like you're, you're reading stuff from you know, 20 people, not 200 people. Um, and then the, the hardest part or the more, the most time consuming part, but very interesting part was when they do the interviews with the people. And then it's like several days where you're in this fancy, fancy, fancy room in a law firm downtown. That's where we met in Midtown, a fancy place in Midtown, like right next to the Chrysler building. Um, and you're there for the whole day doing these interviews and, uh, you know, talking about people's visions for an honors college. And it was, it, it's an interesting experience. I, I, it's a lot of work, but I recommend it. Yeah, I would second everything Lizzie says, and it is much easier when the when the um, the material is provided to you in um, you know you know a packet of the things you have to read for the next meeting, and um, it's pre pre vetted for us. And I found it a, I found it to be a very collegial environment. And, yeah. I'm afraid I don't know how much will take place in fancy hotels with um, catered food versus over Zoom, um, but maybe by the spring there will be uh, a chance to visit the fancier um, venues of, of the city. Yeah, this was definitely a pre-pandemic time when we had never heard of masks. Uh, okay, thank you, Lisa. I guess now we should open it to questions for, for anybody about anything. Oh, was there another point? Well, I was just gonna, um, say I feel free to contact me if you have any kind of administrative questions about the search process or if you're on the fence about whether or not you feel like it's something that you could take on and you just want to try to talk through what that might look like. I don't know that much, but I will do my best to help you. Um, and then in terms of the college council, um, for that, we have these meetings that are generally once a semester, we have the subcommittees like the curriculum committee and the um, recently we had the committee that was looking at our core seminar description updates. So those are kind of like you would be able to join um, subcommittees, whether or not you were, you know, on um, the college council, but really the primary responsibilities are 
coming to the college council meetings, um, being available to like consult on those um, items that we take up. So whether it's something like the GPA revision we did a couple of years ago, or those um, seminar descriptions, we need you to be voting on those. So we need to make sure that, you know, the college council is following the governance process. So compared to, you know, something you might be doing on your own campus, it might be a little bit more lightweight, but it's also something that's really, really important to the running of the college. So if you have any interest, I really encourage you to, um, to throw your hat in the ring for the college council. We have 15 faculty members that sit on that, five of whom are appointed by the dean, 10 of whom are elected by peers. Um, the periods run for one year, so this will be calendar year 2022. Um, and again, if you have questions about that, please go ahead and ask me. I'm, even though I'm very devoted to Macaulay, I'm not a voting member of the college council or on the search committee. So I'm, you can consider me kind of a um, neutral administrative uh, support for you if you have questions. Um, and I, Linda, the password uh, situation should be fixed on the nominations now. Um, and if you are interested in running for college council, the deadline for that is November 15th. So we need a tighter turnaround on the search committee because they really want to get all of the names pinned down. So um, yeah, just reach out if I can be of help in any way. Thanks, Lisa. I'll, I'll throw in one quick uh, thing that I, I should say that uh, is another duty of the, of the council is to approve honorary degrees, which traditionally we, we tend to give one to our commencement speaker. Um, we, we are very hopeful that we'll be having an in-person commencement this spring, um, and we don't yet have an honorary degree or, or a speaker selected. Uh, generally, that's uh, the, the dean or the interim dean who helps us by uh, pulling in her contacts, but is, she is definitely open to suggestions. Uh, so if you, especially, I mean, please don't suggest, you know, Barack Obama, unless you have a connection with Barack Obama and you can make sure that he, he will come. Uh, it's not about your dream of who you would like to, to have. It's about who we have an actual connection and a way to, to get them here. We cannot pay uh, commencement speakers. Uh, so, you know, somebody has to be willing to do it because they love us and our students. Um, okay, so. Uh, um, I think that Owen uh, was waiting to say something. Yes. Uh, I was just going to say that uh, the call for nominations for both the council and for the search committee should be distributed broadly, not just you know mentioned here to the people in attendance at this meeting. Because there are uh, a yeah. lot of people yeah. on all the campuses that care a great deal about this. I'm, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that we were gonna follow up by email very shortly with all the people that we determined were eligible, which is over a hundred people. So but look for that soon. Yeah, there are 31 people on this call, but that's not over 100. So we'll be sending it to all over 100. Um, okay, and then we are open, I guess, for discussion and new business and uh, anything anybody wants to ask of anybody. I invite this body to please take the moment to, to ask me anything. Um, you know, I, I, I welcome all commentary. I'm actually really invested in having dialogue. Um, and so, you know, if there are things that concern you, if there are things that you feel like I should know, again, particularly about the academic experience of our Macaulay students, um, I invite all of those observations, questions, comments, all of that. I have a, a logistical question. Um, sorry, Dean Vildez, it's not necessarily um, one of those kinds of big picture questions. But when we were listening to Lizzie go through the list of all those courses, which sounds so great, it seems like it's more than we've done before. And that's because we now have uh, a core faculty. I understand that uh, at, at the central office there. But are they all meeting in the three classrooms at West 67th Street? and? to the extent that they're not, how are you sorting out, um, how's the consortial piece working out here? Another piece relation of that is the, uh, the four new faculty members, um, some of them are teaching seminars on campus and how are you sorting out which campus they teach on and how's that gonna work? So 
there's a new, there's this growing new dimension to the relationship of Central to the campuses. And I'm wondering if um, uh, both Joe and Dean Valdez, if you could both make some comment about that. Uh, shall I start? Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, so uh, for the, the, uh, the central courses that are uh, nominally meeting here, a good number of them are, are hybrid or online. So the, the classroom, the physical classroom space is less of an issue than it would appear uh, at first blush. Uh, we are limited in, in our classrooms. We, uh, uh, you know, I, I seem to be sitting in the reading room if you look at my background, uh, but I'm not. I'm actually sitting in, in a, a room here at the Macaulay Building. Uh, upstairs, and the classrooms are not large. And so to allow for social distancing and everyone being masked, uh, we're going to be using our lecture hall more than we normally would. Uh, so that adds to the list of, of available classrooms. Um, as far as the number of them, it is a, a slightly higher number than, than we've had before, although uh, we are offering two central sections of our seminar two and two of our seminar four. Uh, so that adds to the list quite a bit. And, and two Full of our spring two spring points, two seminar fours, one seminar two. Okay. Um, and so it, it adds up to 12 courses being offered centrally. Uh, we ran 10 at capacity this fall. We, we're finding that with the hybrid courses, we're getting more demand. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, so I, I think they will fill. Now, as for the, the new distinguished lecturers teaching on the campuses, we announced to the directors uh, at an early directors meeting that this was an, a possibility uh, for those campuses who needed people. Uh, as has turned out, and I'm, this is on my list to talk to Vanessa about tomorrow, the, the need was greater than, than we could meet. Uh, so we kind of went with first come, first served. Uh, so uh, Logan is teaching a course at Baruch uh, and uh, Norell is teaching a course at John Jay. Um, but uh, we, in this first year of the distinguished lecturers, we don't want to kind of send them right out all the way out to all of the campuses. Uh, so I, I do think we'll be able to meet more of those needs going forward. Uh, but another issue is that not every distinguished lecturer can teach every course. So for fall, when we have science forward going, we, we can't necessarily expect someone who's not a scientist or has any background in science to teach a science forward course for us. Uh, but I, I think we are gonna have to have some kind of uh, advanced red reservation system because it's turning out that the campuses want these central folks to come teach the seminars uh, more, even more than I expected. Um, and we don't want, uh, you know, we, we don't wanna be unfair in allocating them. Uh, so this time around, it was kind of first come first serve uh, and we probably are going to have to find some rotation system so that, you know, a campus who's continually making an early request isn't guaranteed to get it every single time because uh, that, that wouldn't work out so well. I would also like to say with regards to uh, space within the building, um, we within cabinet have begun the conversations about what next semester looks like, including our classes. You know, uh, one of the former classrooms is now being converted to office space, for example. And so we have even less space um, than what many of you have remembered pre pandemic. And so, you know, there will be a number of uh, demands on the space that the building on West 67th. Uh, offers us. And so we will be juggling all of those things, right? We will be juggling not only the classes that we're offering, um, the services that we're offering. So for example, our wellness team has found that being on Zoom offers more, they can see more students, you know, because com confidentiality is is secured when one of, when the, the counselors are in their homes, right? As opposed to being in person in the building. And so you know, I, I do think that there should also be serious consideration about, you know, Joe just mentions that we are seeing a higher attendance rates of the hybrid courses, for example. What does the Macaulay experience look like when, whenever this pandemic is over, right? God willing. Um, you know, what, you know, th those in-person seminars, 
you know, we, we are seeing that students from the other boroughs, right, from the CSI campus, from the Queens campus, from the Brooklyn campus, who don't have the time in their schedule to get to West 67th Street, but who are participating in classes right now because they are hybrid. What are we gonna do moving forward, right? Are we just going to go, oh, well, sucks to be y'all. These are gonna be, you know, City and Baruch and John Jay, right? In terms of, and, and this has real pedagogical impact. And I'm very sensitive to that. I did not say in my introduction, though this is widely Googleable, um, that you know, prior to being in this position, I'm coming from 14 years at City College as a faculty member, right? I adore teaching. It is, it is the heart of what I do. Last semester, I taught four classes. I was the director of the Black Studies program that was fully committed to teaching. So I deeply understand you know, pedagogy and, and methodology and learning outcomes. But I do want, you know, I, I do want to plant the seed for that conversation about modality as we move forward, um, because it's not going to be as easy as, well, everybody's in person. We're never, ever seeing technology again, <laughs> right? It, it, there will be some accommodations and we will be seeing that, you know, differently on different campuses. But the beauty of Macaulay is that we're on eight campuses. And so, you know, I, I, I did just want to highlight both of those things. So do you think that that's going to be the kind of conversation that we would have in curriculum committee or in these meetings or where? Because I agree with you, a, a discussion, we need to talk about it. I mean, I, I, I would imagine both, mm -hmm. right? I would imagine that, you know, certainly the curriculum committee is one that, that is be, just because it's a smaller body, right? That's definitely a place, but I do think that, that this would be the space, right? I mean, you know, hearing the business that happens in this body, you know, my experience is that coming from a larger university, there are certain things that are taken up by faculty council, certain things taken up by faculty senate, this body takes up everything, <laughs> right? And so it does invite um, conversation and reflection in, in both bodies, I would think. Thank you. Um, Susan. Oh, hi. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to follow up on um, the discussion and, and what you presented on the bridge scholars. I, I just find it really inspiring, especially the fact that the students are taking this work and bringing it into the public sphere um, and empowering them and, you know, as knowledge creators, as cultural creators. And I'm wondering if there have been any conversations about somehow um, opening this up to the seminars. Mm. Um, students are very engaged in issues of climate, the climate crisis, um, aspects of culture, in addition to social justice. And, and I think it would be like quite inspiring to bring this kind of created agency into the seminars so that students could actually drive forward um, you know, uh, public projects mm. and, ap and apply everything they're learning, whether, you know, it could be collaborations among the seminars or a separate cohort, those are who are interested in doing this, like a laboratory or some kind of setting like that. Susan, we, we haven't really talked about that yet. We've, we've sort of seen this as a uh, you know, we're just getting started, I guess, but we're sort of thinking about this as a program for students who are kind of done mostly with the seminars, but it's a fantastic idea. Uh, this, you're talking about the GEN, the J-E-H-N students, I think, not, yeah. uh, we not have two, two confusing new programs yes. going on at the same time. Um, one of the things that uh, Olga Davis is my counterpart at, uh, at the Arizona State, and one of the things that she has been really kind of talking about is uh, a peer-to-peer -peer pedagogy model uh, for these students. Um, and that, you know, sort of cycle, as she was thinking of, once this cohort is done, cycling back those same students, once they're alumni, to come back and talk to other students in future cohorts. But the idea of making connections with the students and their projects with our students in the seminars is is a good one. I think it's it's really exciting. So we will certainly talk more about that. Yeah, I mean, it could be a lot of different models. And, sure. and the hybrid, 
you know, like a separate seminar, you know, something like that, or a, yeah, special topic. Yeah, you know, this, the, the connections of, of student, Macaulay students with students in Arizona and, and elsewhere once we get there is just so interesting because they're young people committed to the same kinds of issues, but they're living in really different kinds of communities with really different kinds of obstacles and restrictions and political environments. Um, and it seems they have a lot to say to each other about that and a lot to learn from one another about that. Yeah, and, and I think it also plays into the, the interdisciplinary scope of, of Macaulay's initiatives. Absolutely, thank you for that. And if I remember correctly, Joe, you had clarified for me that the recruiting pool are current first year and second year students, correct? Right, right. In which case we're dipping into our, our seminars. This uh, is true, and yeah. And so there's, there's a natural, I think there's a very natural um, opportunity to recruit from our students. And so therefore, those of you who are teaching those seminars, we invite you, know, you to not only identify uh, informally, but please encourage your students because we know that so many students don't go for certain opportunities without the encouragement of their, of someone, right? Of an advisor, of a faculty member, but somebody who sees that promise in them. And so, you know, again, a good, my understanding is a good number of our students maybe sometimes talk themselves out of certain opportunities, right? So certain ones they'll go for, but some of them, they may not. So, you know, we would really appreciate your assistance and support in, in recruitment as well. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Vanessa. I put the link for the, uh, the GEN website there in the chat. Uh, so, you know, that has, the, the application is open now uh, for students to apply for the next cohort. Uh, so really, really interested in any students who got, you want to encourage. Uh, Steve. You may have just answered my question. I was going to ask about how the students, you know, get involved in that. And I think that link probably answers all my questions. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't, let us know and we'll add more information to the, to okay, the website. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking around for any other questions or other business. I do wanna highlight, so Joe, is it, I, in looking through the application for Jen, right, no letter of recommendation? No, we did not require a letter of recommendation. Uh, and I thought that that was, I, rem I thought you had told me that when, when we yeah. first started, which there are two really amazing aspects about Jen, one of which is that this is open to current first years and, and second year students, because on many campuses, those opportunities are only open to juniors and seniors, right? So that is one aspect that makes this a, a very cutting edge program, because we're very much looking at our, our students much earlier in their academic careers. And the second thing in, and you know, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but in the name of equity, the fact that they don't have to chase after um, faculty members and, and applications aren't being dismissed because, you know, faculty, you know, they're, you know, we know our colleagues, right? Sometimes, you know, the letters aren't the, the best. And so, you know, I really appreciate that about this about this program as well, that that those two aspects of equity um, are built into the design of it. So thank you, Joe. Well, thank you. It, it was intentional and, and we, uh, I, I'm just really pleased with the students we got this time. You know, I, I think it, it's kind of a self-selected group and, and we had uh, strong applications with really heartfelt and interesting differing approaches to these questions you know, issues of, of gender equity and issues of transportation equity and health equity, like just from all over the spectrum, um, you know, and, and Macaulay students from all the different groups that are represented at Macaulay uh, and Arizona State students from all the different Arizona State, you know, students who grew up on, on reservations and would travel home to the reservation every uh, summer break and students who are very much urban Phoenix students from, from uh, Arizona State. It's just really a, a fun group who are very, I, I mean, as Laura said, I think willing to make each other themselves vulnerable to one another in a way that's just really, really impressive and, and moving. Um, 
we had the opportunity to have a, a meeting with with all of them in in the spring before before the summer just to kind of have a meet and greet after they were accepted and i think lisa and i both came away with, with tears in our eyes and and we're working to get vanessa to join a, a one of the oss sessions very soon so that she can weep too <laughs> <laughs> thank you i i, I i'm Suspicious about that sentence, but um, I appreciate I appreciate the sentiment behind it. <laughs> okay, I'm looking around and I'm I'm going once, going twice for any last uh, questions for anybody. Then uh, we wish you all a really wonderful evening and a really nice uh, day and nice holiday season. And we're all available anytime, so. Uh, take care of yourselves and stay safe and well. Good night, everyone. Oh, I guess I need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so move. We're adjourned. Yeah. <laughs> Just put it on the agenda, Joe. There you go. <laughs>